So this is our first example. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the parent chain. So this is going to be the longest chain of carbons that we can find on this molecule. If we just look at this, we might want to compare this one in yellow to this one in blue. So the one in yellow is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons long. And the one in blue is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbons long. And then maybe if we want to like double check, we can see if we looked at this green one, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the blue one truly is the longest chain that we can find on this molecule. So the one highlighted in blue is going to be the parent chain. Now that we identified the parent chain, the next thing to do is to number the parent chain. And we can do this in two ways. We can either start numbering from the top. So one, two, three, four, and so on. Or we can start from the bottom. One, two, three, four, and so on. And the way we tell whether we start numbering from the top or the bottom, which side we start, is we compare where the first branch is. So in red, the first branch is at carbon number two. And in blue, the first branch is going to be at carbon five. This is the first substituent. So because the red one has a branch sooner at carbon number two, that tells us that the way we numbered it in red is going to be the correct way to number this chain. So if we continue numbering it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Next thing is to identify all the substituents, everything that is branched off of this main parent chain. And we have this group and we have this group. Those are the two stuff that are branching off the main parent. So this here is a one carbon substituent. This is just a plain methyl. Normally a CH4, we name it methane, but this is CH3 and it's a branch off of a bigger molecule. So we name it with the O ending, indicating that this is a substituent. So this is methyl. The next one is two carbons, um, three carbons long, one, two, three. So this would be a propyl. And now we can go ahead and put all the pieces together. So we name this alphabetically. M comes before P. So the methyl goes first. We indicate its position at carbon number two. So this is going to be a 2-methyl. Next comes the propyl. It's at carbon 5, so this is a 5-propyl. And now we're done with all the substituents. So now we just go ahead and put the name of the parent. It is 9 carbons long, so this is a nonane. So the final name is 2-methyl-5-propyl. Nonane. All right, let's look at another example. All right, so this is our next example. So once again, the first step is to find the parent chain. Which chain is the longest? A couple places to check is this one, and then also this one. Looks like a big one. Starting here, looks like it's smaller. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if I started from here, it's 10. Um, the blue one and yellow one look bigger. So the yellow one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So yeah, this, if we start from here, it's not going to work. And then the blue one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the blue one is also 11 carbons long. And this molecule also has a ring. We have a cyclopentyl group. And when we check which sequence is the longest chain, we can't just start numbering here and then 
come down and then go inside the ring, then out of the ring. We can't do that. We have to either stay completely out of the ring or completely in the ring. So if the ring was the parent, then it would have to be a ring of 12 carbons for this to be the parent. Okay, so now we have a decision to make. Either the blue one is going to be the parent or the yellow one is going to be the parent. And they're actually both 11 carbons long, so we have to compare the substituents. So the rule is that if we have a tie between two chains in the molecule, then the one with the most branching is the parent. So let's see the number of branches. So for the blue one, the blue one has one, two, three, four, bl four branches. And if we look at the yellow one, four branches. If we look at the yellow one, it has one, two, three. So the yellow chain only has three branches, whereas the blue one had four. The blue one is the parent chain because it has the most branching. Now that the blue chain has been identified as the parent chain, now we need to decide from which side do we start numbering. So either we can have it numbered as being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Or we can start from the other side and say that it's it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So once again, we need to check the branching. In the red sequence, the first branch is at carbon number three. In the blue sequence, the first branch is at carbon number three as well. So it's a tie, we have to look at the second branch. In the blue one, the second branch is at carbon five. In the red, the second branch is at one, is at carbon number four right here. The way it's numbered in red wins the tie because we have the branches having the lowest numbers the way it's numbered in red. Alright, so here's our parent chain. It's appropriately numbered. Now we identify all the substituents which are the stuff that are branched off this main chain. We have this group, we have this group, this group, and finally this group. So these are all the substituents that are sticking off this main parent. Two of them are the same. This one and this one are both methyls. This one down here is a cyclopentyl. And then this one is a propyl. So when we form the name, we go alphabetically. So C comes before M and P. So this branch is going to be named first. It is coming off of carbon number 9. So this is going to be a 9 cyclopentyl. Between methyl and propyl, M comes first. So methyl is next. And we have two of them. We have one here and we have one here. So that is carbons number three and carbon number seven. So we have a dash three comma seven, a di to indicate we have two of them, dimethyl. And then finally we have this propyl group. It's, a, it's branched off of carbon four so 4 propyl and at this point we went through all the substituents that are branching off this parent chain so now we'd go ahead and put in the name of the parent it is 11 carbons long so this is undecane so the final name is 9 cyclopentyl 37 dimethyl 4 propyl undecane All right, this is going to be the last example. Let's see where the parent chain is. So by looking at it, looks like we'll want to compare this one 
and we want to compare this one. The green one is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long, and the yellow one is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long. So this is a tie, so now we have to compare branching. So the yellow one has one, two, three, four branches. The green one has one, two, three branches. So like in the previous example, the one with the more the one with the most branching wins, so the yellow one is going to be the parent chain. All right, so now we have to number this. We can either number from this end or from this end up here. And like before, we have to look at the branches. So the first branch in the red one is at carbon two. The first branch on the blue one is also on carbon two. So we have a tie, we have to look at the next branch. So the next branch for the blue one is at carbon three. The next branch on the red one is also on carbon three. Okay, so now let's look at the next branch. So for the red one, the next one is at carbon four. For the blue one, the next one is also at carbon four. And then going to the going to the fourth substituent, it's at carbon five. For the red one, one, two, three, four, five, also at carbon five. So this is a case where all of the branches are going to be numbered exactly the same no matter which way we start. So if this happens, then we have to go and look at the substituents alphabetically. So for the red one, the first substituent is a methyl. For the blue one, the first substituent is also a methyl. So, so far we're tied with the, alf the alphabetical comparison. The second one for the red one is bromo, so that's a B. For the blue one, the second substituent is this here. This is an ethyl, so this is an E. Now we have a winner. In red, we have a B, and in blue, we have an E. B comes first alphabetically, so the way we numbered in red is going to be the correct way. All right, so now the substituents, we have this group, this, this, and this. So we have four substituents. Two are methyls, one is an ethyl, two carbons, and finally we have a halogen. This is a bromide, but we call it a bromo when it's off a organic molecule. Similarly, if this was chlorine, Cl, we would have called it chloro. And if it was iodine, we would have called it iodo. So putting this all together alphabetically, B comes first. It's at carbon number uh, three. So we have a three bromo. E comes next, E comes before M, so the ethyl is off carbon 4, 4 ethyl. And then next we have the two methyl groups off carbons 2 and 5, so this is going to be 2, 5 dimethyl to indicate there are two of them. And now that we're through with all the substituents, we can go ahead and put the name of the parent it is six carbons long, so this is going to be hexane. Three bromo, four ethyl, two five dimethyl hexane. 